FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Treff Peters back with me, and you brought his guest with you today, and it's Mark Manson. You're both cycling without age, Lanark County. Thanks for joining us today and telling us about this wonderful program that you have. Thank you for, seeing, for having us. Can you talk a little bit about what cycling without age is? Uh, cycling without age is a program that started in 2012 in Copenhagen, in Denmark and a gentleman by the name of Ole Kassel. He started taking people out on a trishaw, which is similar to a rickshaw. We, most of us think of a rickshaw as the passenger sitting behind and the operator, which we call a pilot, sits in front. This one is actually, had been a cargo bicycle that had been redesigned. So the passenger compartment that holds two people is in front of the operator of the bicycle. So what the, normally what takes place is that nursing homes um, allow cycling without age pilots to take their elderly out for a bike ride or a tri shaw ride in their community. And the idea is to try to build relationships with our general public and our neighbors who reside in nursing homes. So it's to, to rebuild that, that relationship and to get them out of the nursing home and, and give them an opportunity to see the birds and, and feel, you know, the, smell the, feel flowers, the wind on their face. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's our tagline, wind in your hair. And I mean, I, I'm willing to bet too, like when you're, you, you were at uh, one of the nursing homes just up the street here recently too. I'm sure. Broadview it, Manor. Yeah. And I'm sure when the neighbors see you go by, it's like they want to learn more Then maybe they become a pilot as well. Well, we were very fortunate. We've got a great helper in the town of Brockville, and her name is Joanne Bell. And Joanne Bell has done an incredible job with Brockville. She's actually been the person who was uh, instrumental in having four trishaws uh, brought into that community. And she was uh, good enough to join us for a day. And we were in Smith Falls at Broadview Manor. And from 11 a.m. till 4 p.m., we took um, residents out for bike rides, for a trishaw ride. So we had four pieces of equipment there. And in most cases, we were taking two elderly people out in per trishaw, which was three trishaws. And then she had another interesting apparatus, a very expensive piece of equipment uh, that enables a wheelchair to be mounted on the front of this bicycle apparatus and take someone who is restricted to use in a wheelchair out for a ride in their wheelchair still. So they're, you know, they're comfortable, et cetera. And uh, it makes loading and unloading more easy. Oh, I'm so, uh, so often too, people that are in wheelchairs, that, that chair is designed for them too. And it's not possible for them to be able to sit on a, the, the seat that you would have on a trishaw. So when I saw the picture of the wheelchair being on there, I thought you just opened the door to making yourself available to so many more people. Yeah, we, um, we currently uh, have uh, Lanark Lodge. They're taking rides out with a trishaw that's based in Perth, and we have it in an enclosed trailer. Uh, as of July 8th, we're having the Stone Ridge Manor come on stream, and we've been just doing all the preparations for that. Uh, so that's going to be launched. And our next goal, now we've been fortunate enough to have two fantastic sponsors out of uh, Smith Falls, and that's your independent grocer and Willis Transfer. Danny and Juanita Yandris and the Will Willis family, yes. Oh my goodness. They've been just absolutely fantastic with helping us out. Um, now, they were under the understanding, of course, it was all of Lanark that we we're financing. And our next goal is to raise enough money to purchase a tri shaw for uh, the town of Smith Falls. Now, if we can find a place to store the tri shaw, so that our pilots who are volunteers can get access to it. What we've done in the, the, the last two towns, that being Perth and Carlton Place, we've actually purchased an enclosed trailer and we sell advertising on the trailer as our fundraiser. Um, at this point, it looks like we may have to purchase another trailer or if there's some kind of, like in some communities across Canada, the fire hall actually in, um, in one of the Western towns they have the tri shaw stored at the fire hall and the the pilots which is our volunteers going to get access to the tri shaw there so if we could come up 
with some kind of scenario like that in the town of Smith Falls, then we'd only require to raise money for a tri shop. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at in the town of Smith Falls right now. Uh, we're really optimistic to uh, be able to move forward and get the funding. But at this point, we have to concentrate our time. Mark and I are pretty well run the Cycling Without Age administration. So we have a lot of, tr we've had 60 some people sign up to be trained. We've now have 27 of those people trained. And that sometimes takes as little as two hours or it can take as much as 12 hours till Mark and I feel confident that the person who's going to be operating the tri shaw is completely comfortable and competent. And that, that comfort level varies from person to person, how long they can, uh, it takes for them to absorb all the things that we feel they require to know and to uh, show us uh, by use of the tri shaw because we actually have hands-on tri shaw training. That's the part Mark and I. So we're concentrating on that. We're concentrating on uh, crossing all the T's and dotting the I's for all the legal documents that we're actually, we've spent over two hours this morning going through some documents and having to change them for our agreement with the Stone Ridge Manor, but neither of us are IT guys. So we're in desperate need. If there's anyone in Lanark County that could help us out with the IT side of it, we've been struggling trying to get this document to uh, that we've revised to be able to uh, just mail it out to Stone Ridge Manor or, or print it. We can't even get the darn thing to print. So that's, <laughs> Right now, currently, that is our biggest hurdle. We've been incredibly fortunate to have a fantastic volunteer for the last number of years by the name of Mark Young. And Mark Young is currently on the coast of Africa, setting up the IT. He's an engineer, a retired engineer, at a very youthful age, and he's also a volunteer for the food banks and for churches and whatever. But he's on a three-month mission setting up a mission ship, which is a ship that does surgery out of uh, Africa. So we've lost our IT guys. So poor Mark and I, we're on the verge of um, mental breakdowns. Well, over I feel your pain. I feel your pain. You know, when you're so good at something like this and you're looking at a computer and that's what's holding you up. It's this little piece of machinery over here. It's, it's very frustrating. I feel your pain. Mark, maybe can you talk a little bit about, you know, becoming a volunteer and, and what uh, what to expect if somebody comes to you and wants to learn how to, how to run a tri shop? Well, um, I think once uh, once people see the tri uh in in the in the towns, it will make a big difference. People, uh, the rides that we were doing out of Broadview, uh, it was amazing the number of people uh, that were stopping us on the street and waving to us and wanting to know what it was all about. So I think that is really going to drive this thing forward. Um, People just get really excited when they see it. And I, I think that's going to help us certainly uh, uh, gain some pilots. Uh, so really that's what we need. We need to get some more pilots. Uh, we need to, uh, and once we, once we get people signed up, then we can go forward with the training. Okay, what, what would be the commitment of a volunteer then if somebody wanted to become a pilot? Uh, I guess the biggest commitment would be the, uh, the training and then, uh, uh, yeah, we have to do a, uh, as Treff just mentioned, uh, we require all our pi pilots to uh, complete a vulnerable uh, uh, sector check. Uh, With their local police detachment, yeah. which is commonplace now for volunteers. Um, the only thing that we actually ask after these volunteers have gone through the training program is that they make a commitment of six rides a year. Okay. Of course, there's a number of reasons we want that. One, uh, all the time that we've invested, just for example, our training program with the videos and the um, training manual, we've got endless hours in that. Plus we've have, um, we had a budget of $10,000 to do that. So it's, it's not only time, but there was a large commitment of money so that we could guarantee as as well as we can, that no one is ever going to have a bad situation where someone's going to get hurt, to, uh, you know, right. due to neglect right. on our part as pilots. 
Um, so the only commitment is six rides a year. And this is not this is not typical volunteering. And really even the word volunteer to be to be involved with cycling without age, other than the part that we're doing, the administration part, which is the part nobody wants to do. But all we're asking for for is people to go out for a bike ride and have some fun with an elderly neighbor. So that's not that's not volunteering. That's my idea of volunteering is when you perform work and you don't get paid for it. We're not asking anybody to go to work. We're asking people to go out and have some fun. And when you realize how much joy you're bringing to another person too, you know, it's it's such a, you know, the reason for doing it. Absolutely. Well, one of the staff members at Broadview Manor, as we were returning from each ride, she was taking photographs. And I heard a number of people comment. They're all smiling. Every person that returned. And we took them out on a cold, rainy day. I mean, it was a day that pretty well no one would choose to go for a bike ride unless you're using their bicycle to get to work. And not one person complained about being out. Now we have this really cool blanket. It's like a big canvas. I saw that, like a, a papoose type, type thing almost, yeah. Exactly, so we kept everyone in comfort. We kept on a, on a regular basis through the ride, we asked to hold their hands. And as long as their hands were warm, we felt that their circulation was working well enough and they were comfortable. And we kept checking in with them all the time. You know, are you comfortable? Are you warm? Um, are we going too fast, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we got just, all we had was positive feedback for the entire day. And, and Mark and I was just saying this morning, we're really, really looking forward to getting caught up and getting this, this launch forward and getting some more people trained uh, so that we can get out and do some, uh, to, co to return to Smith Falls with two tri shaws and spend a day taking them out. But the reality is we probably, instead of, concentrating on Mark and I and the residents having fun. We really should be out there uh, shaking the bush and trying to get some fun so that we can have a tri shot on site at Smith Falls. Because the ideal situation that we've um, been able to create is that once a tri shot is on site at a nursing home, that tri shot has the capability of being busy all the time because we train the staff at Lanark Lodge. So Lanark Lodge has their tri shock It's constantly being used. And then <clears throat> for like Stone Ridge Manor, <clears throat> they're going, we're having, we already have a staff member there trained to operate the tri shock but we're gonna expand upon that as, as they bring on more staff because Stone Ridge Manor only currently has 42 beds and they're moving to a brand new facility as of next year. It's 128 beds. Wow, substantial, so wow. Substantial, so they're gonna have more staff mm -hmm. available. So once we get a uh, tri shot on site, the staff members can keep it busy, but we ask to give priority through our scheduling app, which anyone can use with their phone or computer and schedule a ride. So we're gonna give the public priority over the time as of the staff members. But the bottom line is once we get one of these tri shots in place at Broadview Manor and Chartwell Homes, now we're looking at, you know, in the beginning, we'll be sharing a tri shot between those two facilities, right? So there's going to be, they're only about a kilometer, kilometer. They're, they're very close, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's going to be, and also we've invited all the high schools and we've put up big four foot by four foot posters in each one of the high schools and in, Lanark County and have a challenge, a student challenge, we're actually creating a, a trophy for it. As, and we've had each of the um, guidance counselors take delivery of the signs, and they've informed us that there is a lot of students that require hours, community volunteer hours for their graduation. As of date, we haven't had a reply from one student, which we found very surprising. We thought that that would be like a, an ideal scenario uh, so next year, we're going to refire that up for next year, and hopefully we'll be able to get some of our high school students, which we have the $5 million liability insurance, which was um, the name of the insurance company out of um, McDougal. Oh, yes. They okay. were good enough to design a, uh, an insurance policy that includes high school students. 
And that's huge because yeah. most insurance companies don't want to look at insuring high school students. Yeah. So and we once, once you're out there and people see this TriSaw Shaw too, they may not know what, what you're talking about till they see it. And now that the pandemic's over, I'm sure you can be out and about at so many more places too. Brockville ran through the entire time the COVID was in place. Oh, Brockville was taking people out. Yeah. Okay. We, put, we installed a large windshield between the pilot, which is the volunteer that operates the bicycle, and the passengers. So that uh, was a recognized barrier used in your grocery stores, your pharmacies, et cetera, right? Every mm -hmm. cashier had a, had a barrier. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. you weren't required to wear masks. They only put a mask on when they're actually face to face, you know, when you within that less than that six foot distancing. Right. But the actual operating of the bicycle, because you can imagine having one of those uh, masks on and trying to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, possibly heavily at yes. times while you're pedaling yes you well if you don't use the electric assist yes mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there's an electric assist but right. and conversation etc yeah 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 uh, well i i thank you very much for joining us again and telling us about this again and we got to get the word out there because you bring so much joy to people you know it's like you say the wind in your hair and they don't get a lot of opportunity to do that so how do people get a hold of you before we wrap up here trev how do people get a hold of you um simply go to our website was cycling without age lanarkcounty.org but we use the acronym CWALC. I'd like to also just mention one more thing. Uh, soon you're going to be seeing the TOPS, which is a recycling and garbage truck service throughout Lanark County. Now, not all of Lanark County because you know there's contracts, etc. But the owner, Howard McCray, has been and he's one of our sponsors. But he's taken it upon himself to pay the cost to have six recycling trucks have a four foot by eight foot poster of cycling without age. So um, very soon, any people in the communities that he services, there's going to be a large billboard with our address. Somebody else that sees the importance in this program. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I thank you very much for joining us today. Treff Peters and, and Mark Manson, thank you for joining us from CWA Cycling Without Age. The wind in her hair. Let's do this. <laughs> thank Thanks you for, for joining your time. us.